Next news is out of United Kingdom and Iran. Obey and you'll be safe. Audio reveals British Navy unable to prevent ship's seizure. So a couple weeks ago, um, the British Naval, uh, the British Navy confiscated a, an Iraqi, not Iraqi, sorry, Iranian uh, super tanker that was loaded with 2 million barrels of oil that was going to Syria. So they said that they had broken an agreement and they had every right to take over that super tanker. Um, and they thought everything was fine. So just recently they were the, the, again, British Navy was going through Iran's area of, see if I can find it. It doesn't matter. Um, so, so Iran was sending them a message that if they obeyed, um, they could, they'd be safe uh and they weren't hearing that transmission that was going through because they were sending a transmission of their own at the same time just letting them know that they were passing through um and iran ended up taking their their ship that was so so basically the summary is that uh iran's ship was taken by the british uh by the british army um and the british army was saying that oh this ship was taking oil to syria and this is against the sanctions, so that's why we took the ship. Iran is saying, we weren't taking it to Syria, so you had no right to do it. And now Iran, as revenge, basically took a British ship in the Hormuz, uh, you know, the Strait of Hormuz. Which, there you go, yes. Which is, which is a very, this is, I don't, I don't know how to make this clear how, how important the Strait of Hormuz is. The Strait of Hormuz is, and this is the main, this is the main um, gun that Iran has over the whole world's economy. Okay, basically, this is the strongest uh, attack. You know, the strongest way that Iran could demand things, put the whole world's economy at pressure, put the United States at pressure, put the international community at pressure, is by its control over the Strait of Hormuz. Right, and, because, uh, and as the British Navy was saying, it, that's due to, like, they have to go through there for yeah. international trade. They have to. Um, and I also just wanted to point out that a, um, a UK warship spread, sped to help the British tanker, but arrived 10 minutes too late. It had already been taken over at the time. Yeah, it's there. actually, a lot of people were surprised by how fast uh, Iran managed to take this ship. Um, because, especially because both US and British forces always want to, send the world a message that the, the, that these waters are safe okay um this, this the strait of hormones one out of i think one out of every five barrels of oil has to go through the strait of hormones and the fact that iran can control the strait of hormones means that iran can basically really put pressure on world the world's economy right just j- just to tell you how sensitive this area is just by announcing that hey we might do something they could, you know, they could make an impact on the world's economy, right? Just so, but now they have gone beyond that. They actually seized the ship, and this is why it's scaring the bejesus out of all these, you know, tr- trade companies and the United Kingdom and the United States. The thing is that, uh, you know, it's you know, a lot of people are like, well, yeah, but United States has a lot of ships, has a lot of power, has a lot of army, and so does the UK. So this shouldn't be a problem. But what they don't understand is that the, the art of asymmetric warfare, especially if that's a war that you're playing in your back, you know, in your back alley rather than in the United States, close to the United States. I mean, you have to you have to understand, even if you have the biggest army in the world, it's not really easy to go somewhere else where people have and make, you know, if you're the agent that has to cause chaos to get what you want you're always going to have the advantage of playing asymmetrical warfare against the against a side that has to create order to get what you want because maintaining order costs a lot more astronomically more than creating chaos and for iran for things to become difficult for people for for the its enemies right now it's on the side of the, um, it's on the side of having to cause chaos. So, you know, you could have 
lots of helicopters, lots of submarines, lots of ships, but it just takes a boat, a few people, and a mine to go go stick on a ship and just make that ship just stay stuck there for a whole month for for four months right or you could just go not even a ship you could just go throw a whole bunch of mines in the uh straight of hormones and now no company no private company will want to go there with because of the risk of the UN. Now, hey i dropped just dropped a few mines there you know how many months it's going to take for you to be able to clear that and you know you know during that month if you have no oil passing through the can uh, straight during that month, you know how devastating that's going to be for the world economy. This is why Iran has such a huge leverage over that. And this is why a lot of people say that the only way that this is might be why a lot of people in the United States have calculated the only way is, is for, for the government to be completely replaced because of how much control Iran might ha has over the Strait of Hormuz. Guys, if you don't know where the Strait of Hormuz is, go look it up on the map, because this is from geopolitical perspective, this is a very important, small piece of, uh, uh, you know, small dot on your map, but a very important part, right? Um, okay. this, this is so important, uh, for example, Saudi Arabia, because for has uh, just made a pipeline to go from the Persian Gulf through Saudi Arabia so they don't have to rely on the Strait of Hormuz to get their oil out. And guess what happened? The Houthis, which are the uh, uh, Iranian proxy, uh, went and attacked those pipelines, right? Because Iran wanted to make, make sure, I mean, this is guessing because Iran denies that they were acting on their behalf. Um, but this sends a message that no, if, if we don't, if we get sanctions, if Iran doesn't get to sell oils, then nobody in this region gets to sell their oil. Because all your oil, even if it's not our oil, even if it's Iraq's oil, even if it's Saudi Arabia's oil, it has to go through the Strait of Hormuz. And the Strait of Hormuz is shared between two countries, Oman and Iran. But the thing is that Oman is militarily, like, is nothing compared to Iran, right? And Iran, so Iran could always complete you know come up with reasons why it stopped the ship for example with this one their excuse was that they said like they contacted the ship they sent them a warning they didn't get a response so they went for it uh and they were just uh, they, they were just upholding international laws that's why they seized the ship but then uh, some authorities were also saying well this was also a response to the ship that they took so which is it were you uh, maintaining international laws or was it a revenge to the, to the ship a retaliation a retaliation exactly. but some people are saying it was both because usually even when people break the law we let them go and even though they break the law so but we don't but legally we can take this ship even though we don't have to take this ship we can't take this ship because the ship was breaking law so that's their excuse some people are saying, no, we didn't, this, Iran is lying, we didn't break any laws. By the way, and I saw another video, Iran is, you have no idea how many, how much they're boasting about taking this. Just recently, they took down a drone. They were so proud of taking that, but you know, a US drone. But now they took this ship, and they're so proud, it is, they're, they're, they feel so strong, and you know, like, look how we're like showing these, you know, world, uh, you know, war, you know countries would, giant armies who's the boss in this region right they what they were the video that leaked that i wasn't leaked they posted it that i saw was that they were praying on this ship on this british ship and that they, they had the call to prayer the adhan the islamic call to prayer as a sign of showing power that look we took your ship and now we're praying on it and they had the as on playing uh, on the speakers on the on this British ship just to send them uh, uh, and people were watching that and these people that are on the side of the Islamic Republic side they were so proud they were like we're showing our enemies who's the boss here it's so it's amazing yeah and I saw a comment here Rick is saying well deserved see this is why I really bad I hate right now U US's foreign policy because Iran Iran's theocracy is Iran's government is a very bad theocratic di dictatorship, violent, anti-human government. But for some reason, Saudi Arabia, Israel, and the United States have managed to do the impossible. And what the impossible was to make Iranian government look like the victim. As such an oppressive regime, 
such a such a you know so I'm not saying they are they are the victims but again they are made to look like the victim because of all these bad decisions by the United States I've never seen so many American and so many Europeans defend Iran as much as I have seen in the past few months over military military actions that the Iranian the Islamic Republic is taking against uh, American assets and British assets I've seen Americans and British people defending it because they say well this is Trump um, Iran was signed the deal uh, you know they were abiding by the deal United States came out of it well now this is what happens um, you know and all, now a lot of people are on Iran on, on Iran's side so again this is a tra this is a huge tragedy and it comes this is a major foreign policy mistake by Trump the thing is that the, the perceptions matter because if you make Iran look like they're on the right side this is you know you're basically feeding into their recruitments and more 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 passionate support from within their own country great job another uh, okay John is saying it's hard to believe Iran was a secular advanced nation before the revolution well it was secular but it wasn't democratic so this week let's just be clear it wasn't it was it was better but it wasn't it was still a di dictatorship before the revolution atheists are under attack in many places if they were christians their voices would be heard if they were jews their voices would be heard if they were muslims their voices would be heard but they are atheists and not many seem to be listening let's make it difficult for them to ignore us we have built a global community and now we are tearing down geographic cultural and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other in the last decade we have built the largest atheist community in the world now we're doing the same in other languages with your help we have started atheist republic in persian and arabic انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.